SPIE presents the Advancing the Laser series, honoring 50 years of laser achievements. My name is John Mitty, currently a professor of physics at the uh, University of Hawaii at Manila. Uh, had a chance to work over the past 50 years in a number of uh, interesting and exciting places, uh, including <coughs> uh, Caltech, Stanford, uh, Duke, and now University of Hawaii. Uh, principal interest has been uh, in uh, the physics of electrodynamics uh, with applications to laser technology, uh, in particular uh, the uh, development of the free electron laser. What are some of the current applications of free electron lasers? The most adventurous uh, uh, is the uh, uh, demonstration of operation of X-ray free electron lasers. Uh, these are devices that uh, have operated sufficiently high uh, peak currents uh, and with sufficiently perfect undulator magnets uh, to achieve uh, very high single pass gains, uh, thereby uh, amplifying the spontaneous radiation that's emitted at the beginning of the undulator to levels, very high power levels, by the end of the undulator. Uh, millijoules or higher uh, pulse energy at wavelengths of the order of kilovolts to tens of kilovolts uh, <coughs> with coherence properties that uh, even without monochromators are comparable to those uh, obtainable from fully monochromat monochromatized undulator sources but with the power to take uh, uh, images uh, by diffraction or by the other means that uh, are now being pursued uh, in a single shot. There's no question in my mind that given the time resolution uh, of those sources uh, that uh, fundamental new science will be uh, uh, obtained, particularly as it relates to the dynamics of the proteins uh, that mediate almost all the processes of interest from, of, in life, uh, from genetics to uh, metabolic processes. Uh, <coughs> the uh, there are a number of other uh, uh, smaller scale projects uh, underway at, at uh, uh, longer wavelengths, including sources designed uh, to produce the extreme ultraviolet light, the coherent extreme ultraviolet light required for uh, uh, EUV lithography, which uh, is, let's all hope it works because it is, it is the absence of such a source at this point that is the principal roadblock to the next step in Moore's Law uh, in that field, something in which we all have an interest, uh, <coughs> uh, to longer wavelength uh, FELs operating at, uh, in the millimeter wave, the terahertz region, uh, for uh, exploration of other aspects of biophysics and, and electronics. What are the potential uses of free electron lasers in defense and security? The uh, Navy has a substantial program at this point uh, dedicated to ship defense, direct energy ship defense, which I, I think is a plausible uh, uh, objective for the technology at this point in time. Uh, <coughs> uh, it's not just a matter of engineering, but it's probably close to a matter of engineering as it relates to uh, the uh, the uh, systems, elements of the systems required. Uh, <clears throat> and uh, perhaps would open the door uh, uh, through uh, the availability of, of uh, uh, systems with infinite magazines, as it were, and decent reliability uh, to uh, explore other applications of directed energy weapon systems. Uh, in Homeland Security, uh, the, uh, the question uh, the challenge is to uh, match uh, the possible detection techniques uh, with uh, light sources that are capable of providing uh, energy at the required wavelength with required coherence and the required directivity. Special nuclear materials uh, have a number of novel interactions with uh, high energy x-rays or low energy gamma rays that, that uniquely tag uh, their presence. Uh, when illuminated uh, by photons of the right energy uh, and uh, if sufficiently directional sources can be built uh, to scan uh, the contents of whatever it is that's being looked at, that's a process that might be possible to do without uh, generating uh, radiation at levels that 
uh, could be issues for the health of the public or the workers surrounding the area. Uh, I suspect that, that in the area of homeland security, uh, at least for the foreseeable future, uh, we will not be talking about uh, a development of a specific system, uh, but rather a research capability uh, that lets us explore what is possible by means of these various means of detection and identify the specifications uh, needed to uh, achieve those in a, in a practical package. And when we know that, we'll be able to, to see what it'll take to get there, whether that's an FEL or some purpose-built uh, laser system. But FELs, at least in the short term, clearly have a critical role to play at, at the uh, uh, demonstration of feasibility and identification of approaches. What are your thoughts on the importance of basic research? At the most fundamental level, what research does for the country is, is to provide uh, a means of exploration, uh, a means of uh, addressing uh, the uh, unknown uh, in ways that, uh, uh, on the one hand, merely satisfy intellectual curiosity, but on the other hand, address some of the most fundamental questions that uh, uh, we have in our, in our own lives and, and uh, uh, careers. Of course, uh, new products, new developments, uh, new procedures uh, have been the basis of our economy uh, at least since the, uh, the, uh, for the last century. It will obviously continue to be so, perhaps most prominently in the field of energy and, and, and health. And uh, we can't get to the future from where we are uh, without the continuing input of basic research to guide that process.